Hello everyone, this is Charles here at Nutrition101. Today, I wanna to talk about a really good topic um, that's probably kind of confusing for some people and maybe some people just not quite sure what the difference is between these two things, and that is lactose intolerance or sensitivity or dairy allergy or let's say milk allergy. So I'm gonna explain the major differences between these two today, and this way I can give you, uh, enlighten some things for you, and maybe you can realize that, you know what, you can probably consume a little bit of dairy and you just don't even realize that. But we have to know the differences between these two before we get to that. All right, so let's start off by, by saying uh, how many people are affected, right? Well, 70% of adults are lactose intolerant or have some kind of sensitivity. We just don't know that because maybe we, we are experiencing some symptoms and you, you might think it's something else, right? Maybe eczema or, you know, just age or things like that, right? But a lot of the times, a lot of this is caused because of vaccines that we've had earlier when we were babies. It can cause some of these things down the line to break, to break down. Uh, a lot of tests show that vaccines in general kind of give you some kind of chronic issue, not death, not, not being death, but some kind of chronic issue that you might suffer for, for the rest of your life, some skin issues and things like that. All right, so only 70% of people. Meanwhile, only 4% of adults suffer from dairy allergies. So it's a big difference there, it's a big gap. And I'm gonna get into some of the reasons why that is. All right, so we have two types, well, there's four types of lactose intolerance or sensitivity, right? There's a primary, the secondary, and there's two other ones, but we're not gonna get into those today. Uh, Primary is usually inherited. That means it's passed down. If, uh, one of your parents could have it, you'll get it. Uh, it's any kind of genetic mutation uh, from one of the parents, you can get it. And if both both have it, then you'll definitely have some kind of sensitivity, all right? Uh, secondary is usually develops, and this could develop at really at any age, right? Uh, as it, it starts to develop as low as five years. So we're born, most of us have, have the tolerance for lactose, which is milk sugar. All right, in case we're not, not sure what that is, that's the sugar inside milk. So if you see cheeses and things like that or that have a sugar content, it's most likely has lactose. Uh, all right, so this can happen at any age. We can develop this, right, secondary. And this is up to like, you know, 50. Um, I, I developed mine in, in my 40s. All right, so that's what happened there, so unfortunately, right? All right, so we were born. We could consume this at up to two years old. We start to lose something called lactase, right? Which is an enzyme that helps us break down or process lactose, right? Lactase, right? So it affects the digestive system in response to the lack of lactase. So once we stop producing that, that, um, that enzyme, we can no longer absorb lactose, which is why we have these reactions, okay? We can all proce uh, process lactose until about the ages of two to five, unless of course you're allergic to it, all right? Uh, by 20 years old, uh, only a third of us, uh, the population can um, tolerate lactose, unfortunately. Uh, like again, like a lot of us walking around not knowing that this is a problem for us, but this, this is what it is. This is statistics, this is science-based numbers. A third of us can practice, uh, can tolerate uh, lactose, all right? Um, but the severity does vary right some people can handle a little bit like if you have a good healthy diet and you take a probiotics and you maintain a good digestive system and gut flora and things like that we will be able to handle a little bit right we can handle a little bit like myself i could have like some lactose and just little spurts little doses at a time uh you know it's in milk chocolate it's in you know ice cream obviously uh, I could handle little doses at a time and, and only one day at a time. Like I could, if I did it two days in a row, I kind of stacked it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get reactions, right? The uh, mild reactions, they're annoying, but they're, but they're not uh, severe and fatal and things like that. All right. So the symptoms are problematic, of course, like we just talked about that, but they're not harmful, right? They include gas, bloating, diarrhea, cramps. And this can happen within a few minutes. You'll know, like if you have a clean system and you and you're did some intermittent fasting and you did an elimination diet. If you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you, as soon as you put something that your body doesn't doesn't want and it rejects, it's going to let you know within minutes. Within minutes, okay. But it also could be up to an hour, right? When, uh, when you experience these things. But generally speaking, you'll know pretty fast, okay. Now, as far as 
um, allergies, right? A lot different, different beasts, completely different things separately, right? Because when it comes to food sensitivity or, an, or uh, uh, lactose intolerance, this has to do with our body not able to absorb lactose because of the lack of enzyme. But with allergies, we can absorb the lactose, but then we have an immune response to the proteins, okay? It affects the immune system, right? This is casein and whey and things like that, which is why if you have an allergy, you have to avoid eating protein powders, which is, which is pretty hard, right? Uh, it's genetic, right? We know allergies are genetic, but it usually does go away on its own, uh, right? That's why only 4% of the adults uh, have an allergy, right? Uh, if you're born with an allergy, um, all lactose must be avoided, you know, and if you have an allergy for milk or dairy, chances are you probably have other allergies. And again, this is probably the onset of like, you know, vaccines in the past, right? This, it, it leaves, again, again, some kind of chronic condition that you're suffering from is most likely from the vaccines or anything that kind of disrupts the immune system, right? So a lot of times, even when it comes to the sensitivity, if we have a bad diet or have some kind of stressful event or something that creates some kind of autoimmune response. Like for me, I went through a very stressful time, 2009, 10. I had lost my sister and a lot of crazy things was going on around then. I got psoriasis. So I developed an autoimmune, autoimmune disease. And then from that, that's when I started having food sensitivities, which is crazy. And the things I ate and loved most was gluten, dairy, and peanut butter. And I would consume a large amount of that in a day. I, I might have two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a slice of pizza, and a glass of milk easily in a day. Easily. Okay? Then I then those then I realized those are my triggers and I couldn't do those things anymore. Right? Because that now I was I had a suppressed immune system. And if you're someone that takes a lot of antibiotics or you live off of of um, even Advil and, and, and those kind of things like that, like NSAIDs, uh, anti-inflammatory things, it's definitely going to suppress your immune system in a way, and this could cause problems. The symptoms uh, vary when it comes to uh, food al uh, milk allergies, but they are moderate to severe, right? This could be pretty fatal, right? Cramps, bloody stools, very unpleasant, hives, anaphylaxis, right? You can die from that if you don't treat yourself with an EpiPen. Um, skin rash and nausea, and again, you can react from this within minutes up to even three hours when you start to feel the effects of this. So this is something that's real serious. Uh, chances are you don't have an allergy to milk, but you do have a food sensitivity. And that's going to be pretty promising because we can still have blocked cheese, aged hard blocked cheese, right? Because there's no lactose to that. Just look at the labels. Look at the labels and see what's going on back there. Right, if it's up like cottage cheese or or cream cheese, right? You'll see sugar in those, but that just generally means that's lactose. That's the lactose sugar. So, uh, again, we, sometimes we could take those in small doses. Sometimes we can't take it at all. But it depends on on your on your uh, symptoms, right? Some things are just unpleasant. You don't you don't want to sleep at night, or you can't sleep at night, or you just don't want to deal with this stuff throughout the day or the next day. So you just avoid it completely. But I would recommend a good probiotic. Uh, and you could even consume things like uh, kefir, which is a dairy product with probiotics. You might be able to handle that. And if I handle goat's milk and goat's milk yogurt perfectly, no problems at all with that. So that's kind of a promising thing for you. So that's the main difference between these two. Hopefully that clarified it and I made it just a little bit easy for you to figure this out. There's a lot, a lot of uh reading material on this there's a lot of research done on this there's a lot of videos on this if you're not if uh you're not content with what i had to give you right there's doctors out there um talking all about this stuff all the time so thank you again for tuning in my name is charles here at nutrition 101 i'm just trying to get this information out there so please support me just click subscribe and definitely share this information if you know anyone that might be suffering from one uh one of these or if you don't know which one you're suffering from all right, thank you again. My name is Charles here and Nutrition 101. Talk to you again real soon. And the last thing you want is like hives and just looking like gross. Like gross. You don't even want to see yourself in the mirror sometimes. It's just